Okay, so now I'm going to do a demonstration for the class activity. So each student is going to get into a partnership and there will be a deck of cards in between them. And uh, so this deck of cards will represent an entire um, uh, gene pool, all of the genes that are in it. You're going to have the students shuffle the cards and then after the cards have been all shuffled, you're going to have the students um, deal two piles of 16. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And then, uh, so this pile is the leftover pile, we'll sit right here. Um, this is one student. One student in the partnership gets this. The other student in the partnership gets the other one. And then what they do is they take these cards and they lay them out into eight pairs. So there's one pair. There's two pairs. There's three pairs. Four. Five. Six. Seven. And eight. Now what you're going to explain to them is that these eight pairs represent eight individuals, and these eight individuals make up a small population. Uh, the other partner's eight pairs make up a population in a different location. Each individual is made up of two cards. Red cards represent recessive alleles, black cards represent dominant alleles, and uh, so each individual has their own expression. Um, and so what you do now is you have the students record the number of homozygous dominant, the number of homozygous recessive, and the number of heterozygous. You also have them um, write down the allele frequencies. Um, so in this case, we would have two, four, five heterozygous, three homozygous dominant, and zero homozygous recessive. If we look at the allele frequencies, we have um, five red and 11 black, 5 recessive, and 11 uh, dominant. So now what we're going to talk about is genetic drift, and specifically it will be the bottleneck effect. This will illustrate uh, the bottleneck effect. So what the students are going to do is they will select two, uh, two um, individuals in their population. Let's say I select these two individuals, and they're going to set them aside. And they're going to take these six individuals and put them into a pile. And what, what you'll explain to them, or what will be explained, is that these six individuals, or there's been an earthquake that has happened. And by chance, these six have died, and for no particular reason, these two individuals have lived. And so these six are going to get shuffled back into the, the pile that we set aside. Just like that. And now we have these two individuals that are left here. Um, as you can see, that we had a population and it bottlenecked down to two. So now, these two are going to mate. And so you're going to have the students go through um, the, the cards that were set aside. And for every black card, they're going to find three black cards. And for every red card, they're going to find three red cards and put them with it. So we have three red cards there, black card, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. There we go. So now we have 16 total cards. And this represents the population. So what we do is we put them all together, we shuffle them, to get the, the alleles all mixed up. Um, and we redeal them out. So now that we have this, you have the students um, again write down the number of homozygous recessive, the number of homozygous dominant, the number of heterozygous, and the allele frequency. And um, so, in this case, we have two recessive, we have six dominant, we have four out of 16, or a one in four, 25% um, recessive, 75% dominant. So they write that down. And uh, that shows um, bottlenecking. Um, and that's 
what we would expect. Um, 25 per, the, the alleles have now shifted. Um, red has become smaller, or the amount of recessive genes have become smaller, the amount of dominant genes have become bigger, because in the two original individuals, there were 75% of them were dominant, um, and 25% were recessive. And so now we can see that in the population. So now we leave this set up the way it is, and we can um, move on to the next thing. We're going to talk about gene flow. It's important to remember, gene flow just talks about migration. And so the way we're going to do this, the other student has had these 16 cards over here. He has them laid out like this over in his pile. And they're just going to select four individuals. And so right off the top, I'm going to select, here's one individual, here's two individuals, here's three individuals, and here's four individuals. They're going to select four individuals from the group. And these four individuals are going to leave their population and come over here. This is immigration. They're immigrating um, here. Um, and so, now we have a population. The other partner has a population of four. This partner has a population of 12. And they're going to have this population mate. And um, so the way that we're going to do this is you take one card from each pair and you switch it with one card from another pair. Once that is done, you flip those cards over because we're only going to do this once. So here, we'll take this card, switch these, flip them. We'll switch, uh, we'll switch these, and flip them. We'll switch these ones. And it doesn't really matter which card is switched. Take these ones, flip them, switch these ones, flip them, switch these ones, flip them. Now we flip them back over. We have the students write out. Oh, before we do this, before we did that, before we switch the cards, you have this. You should have the students record the number of uh, homozygous recessive, homozygous dominant, and the number of alleles. So then, what you do um, now that you have this whole setup, you have them again record the number of homozygous dominant, the number of homozygous recessive, the allele frequency. Then you can have them do it again if you like. Switch these ones, you can switch these ones, you can have them switch these ones, um, you can have them switch these ones, and these ones, and these ones. There we go. We have a new generation. have them uh, compare. Uh, they record number of homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, heterozygous, allele frequency. Um, they record all that. They look how it changed in those three generations just by adding those four individuals. How those, how that demographic changed. And then you have them pick four randomly. We'll say this one, this one, this one, and this one. And they go over to the other partner's population. And now we're left with eight. And we have this group. Um, we have them mate. So what we can do is we go um, here to here. Flip them. We have um, here to here. Flip them. Here to here. Here to here. Okay. And then they flip them all back over. They record again the number of heterozygous dominant or homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, heterozygous the number of alleles, and here they can see how in in this new generation how it's how uh, them leaving has shifted. And you can do this another generation if you want. You can keep going on and on if you want. But that is to demonstrate gene flow, how gene flows between two um, two smaller populations. So now. Uh, we're going to talk about natural selection. So what the students do for natural selection is um, these traits represent the color of the animal. If you have two recessive homozygous, um, if you have a homozygous recessive pair, that means the animal is red. If it's a homozygous dominant pair, that means the uh, animal is black. If it's a heterozygous pair, it's black because black is the, or the dominant allele. 
And so what you do, um, a predator comes in and he eats the red, um, the red uh, offspring because he can see it easier. And so every time we do a generation, we have to remove any homozygous recessive because all of them get eaten. And then one of the heterozygous gets eaten too, just by chance. And then we count up the number of heterozygous that we have. And for every two heterozygous, we go back to the, the pod we said, said, for every two heterozygous, we can have one real, red allele back. Okay? In this case, we have three heterozygous. So you round down to the nearest um, even number. And um, so it's two. And two means that we can put one back. So if you had five heterozygous, then you could put two alleles back. Um, so we got that, but we don't have 16. And so we go through and we add cards, we add black cards until we have 16 again. And then we take this, uh, we, we stack them up. This group is going to mate completely changed offspring. Okay, one of these, take it away. We have a heterozygous, we have to take it away. We only have one heterozygous now, so we can't, we have to round down, zero. Now we add black cards back, two, one, two. Oh, and it should be mentioned every time um, when the cards get re-dealt, you have the students record the homozygous dominant, the heterozygous, homozygous recessive, the heterozygous, and the allele frequency, again, for that generation. Now, the students keep doing this. Um, they keep going, keep going. They do this for however many generations it takes, and it shouldn't take very many. It should only take like two or three generations at most doing this. And the idea, see, so now there are no homozygous recessive. There's only a heterozygous. So we have to remove all the homozygous recessive. They're gone. We remove one heterozygous. And then we have to put uh, black cards in until it's 16. And now it's at 16. And so we can see how the red has been eliminated, or how these cards have evolved from where they were, um, which they started out, they were uh, heterozygous and homozygous dominant, and how through genetics, they, there were times that those genotype, uh, the, the allele frequencies changed, the um, phenotypes that were expressed changed, um, they all changed, and it's eventually evolved now to where this trait is expressed in every one of these. And uh, so that's, that's the basic idea of the activity. It shows how those three mechanisms uh, specifically work. And uh, that's a wrap.